Hello students, this is Mrs. Yao. Today on Algebra 1, we are learning Chapter 3, Lesson 2, which has to do with linear functions. Today we are starting on page 66 of your journal. A linear equation in two variables can be written as y equals mx plus b, where m and b are constants. Remember that m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. So when you graph it, it looks like a line hence the word linear. So it has the word line right in the name. A linear function are all lines except vertical lines. If you had a vertical line, it would not pass the vertical line test, which you just learned about in section one. So a vertical line is not a function. A nonlinear function cannot be written as y equals mx plus b, and when you graph it, it does not look like a line. Things that you want to watch out for for nonlinear functions are, is the x in the numerator or is it in the denominator? If it's in the denominator, then it's not a line. Is there an exponent at the, on, with the x? If there is, then it's not going to be a line. Those are some common things to watch out for. The solution of a linear equation in two variables is any xy point that is on the line. If it's on the line, then it is a solution. A discrete domain is when you have individual points. So they might form a line or not, but if you have individual points, then it's a discrete domain. A continuous domain is when you don't have individual points. Instead, you have a curve or a line that connects things together. That would be a continuous domain. And remember, when you have a, a individual points, when you have a discrete domain, then when you're giving your answer, they're going to be individual points, like one, two, three, things like that. If you have a continuous uh, domain, then you're going to be giving the domain with less than or greater than, so for example, so like one less than or equal to x, less than or equal to five, for example. So if you have a discrete domain, they're going to be individual numbers. If you have a continuous domain, you'll be using less than or equal to or just less than signs. There are several different ways to represent functions. We could have words. So for example, an output is three more than the input. We could have an equation like this, y equals x plus three. You can have an input output table where you put some inputs in and you see what the outputs are gonna be. That input output table could be written as a mapping diagram, which we see here an example of, or you could put it as a graph. So these are all different rep ways to represent a function. And we talked about this on the previous page, um, a discrete and continuous domains. So a discrete domain are individual points. So for example, one, two, three, four, five. A continuous domain is a set of uh, points that are more continuous. So we have between one and five and how you would say that is different. So on the first one, we would say that the domain is one, two, three, four, five. And on the second one, we would say the domain is between one less than or equal to X less than or equal to five. In exercises one and two, we need to determine whether the graph represents a linear or a nonlinear function, and we need to explain. So if we look at number one, we can see that very clearly that this is not a line. It looks like a curve to me. So this is a nonlinear function. In number two, we can very clearly say that this does look like a very straight line, so it is linear. In exercises three and four, determine whether the table represents linear or nonlinear and explain. So here is how we do that. We're going to take a look and see what the differences are, so or how they increase. So as x increases plus one, and this is also plus one, and this is also plus one. And just for the fun of it, I'm gonna add another number here because I wanna show you something that you might encounter in your textbook. So I'm gonna add another number of six and 14. And so this one has increases by two, okay? So now let's take a look and see how the y's increase. So negative one to positive two is adding three. Uh, two going up to five is also adding three. 5 going up to 8 is adding 3, and 8 going up to 14 is adding 6. 
So if you look at that, if you think about how slope is found, the slope is found by finding the difference in the y numbers over the difference in the x numbers, which is exactly what we just found. We found the difference in the y numbers, and we found the difference in the x numbers. Now, the difference in the slope of the y's to the x's are the same all the way across, right? 3 over 1, 3 over 1, this is also 3 over 1, and this is 6 over 2, which simplifies, if we were to simplify that, it would still be 3 over 1. So number three is linear and the reason why it's linear is because as the x increases by one the y increases by three okay so let's take a look at number four uh, how does the uh, x numbers change so between negative one and zero is add one and then add one and add one again so let's take a look at how the y numbers change so between 0 and negative 1, we are subtracting 1, and now going from negative 1 to 0, we are adding 1. I don't even need to look at the last one here. Between 0 and 3, we're adding 3. So as you can see, these are different amounts this time. So since they're different amounts, we know that it's nonlinear. And the reason why it's nonlinear is because as x is always increasing by 1 each time, y is increasing by different amounts, okay? Uh, it's, it's not really increasing, it's decreasing in this case, but it's increasing by different amounts. And so we would say that it is the, so that means that the rate of change is not constant. In exercises five and six, determine whether the equation represents linear or a nonlinear function. Remember, in order for it to be linear, we need to be able to rewrite the equation as y equals mx plus b. So let's take a look at number five. Um, I have my y by itself. Now can I rearrange this so that it is mx plus b? And yep, it sure can. If we flip-flopped those, we'd want to make sure to keep the negative with the two. So we can rewrite it as y equals negative 2x plus 3. So that means that it is linear because it can be rewritten as y equals mx plus b. Number six says y is equal to negative three-fourths x to the power of three. Uh-oh. Uh, this cannot be rewritten as y equals mx plus b because of this x to the third there. So this is nonlinear because it cannot be written rewritten as y equals mx plus b. In exercises seven and eight, find the domain of the function represented by the graph. Determine whether it is discrete or continuous. Now it only asks us to find the domain, but I want to actually practice also finding the range as well with you because it's a good, uh, good practice to do that. So let's, we're going to find the domain. We're going to find the range. So let's first start with the domain. So if I look, take a look, this is continuous, right? Uh, so if I look down, the, it starts at a 1 and it ends at 5. And it includes those because the points are filled in. So that means it's going in between those two. So the domain is going to be positive 1, less than or equal to, remember to keep it as x because it's domain. Domain remembers your x numbers less than or equal to 5. Now let's take a look at the range. The range, the lowest number on the range is um, positive 1, and the highest number on the range is positive 6, and it's everything in between. So my range is going to be between 1, less than or equal to y this time, because we're dealing with range, less than or equal to positive 6. And then it asks us to determine whether it is discrete or continuous. This is a continuous graph. Number eight, let's find our x numbers first. So I see it pointing at the one, and it's pointing at the two, and it's pointing at the three. So our domain is one, two, and three. Okay, let's take a look at the range. The range is pointing at the three, and the four, and the five. So our range is 3, 4, and 5. And as you can see, since we have individual points, this is going to be a discrete graph. 
Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.